Okay, we're back here live in Silicon Valley. We are in the heart of Silicon Valley. We're at the San Jose Convention Center here in California. This is Hadoop Summit 2013. Um, this is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. A lot of action happening here. A lot of growth, a lot of innovation, a lot of positioning, a lot of companies we've had startups on, we had founders, we had CEOs, developers. We're here to extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com, and I'm joined with my co-host. I'm, I'm Dave Vellante at Wikibon.org. Stefan Groshup is here. He's the CEO and founder of Datamere. Stefan, welcome back to theCUBE. Good to see you again. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, you're welcome. So you've been, uh, you've been hitting the circuit up here. I you know, saw you yeah. on stage, and uh, you are, a little controversy as usual, but uh, <laughs> but you've been here since Not the surprising. beginning. Of, yeah, surprising. <laughs> you've been here since the beginning of uh, of Hadoop. You're obviously an early contributor, committer to to the project. Where? How would you describe where we're at today? You've seen the baby, you know, grow up. Where, where right. are we at? Yeah. So th this is my tenth year. Yeah. Um, <laughs> maybe that's why I'm controversial too. Right? <laughs> I saw it before. But I think what we're seeing, and it's actually very fascinating, is that we are literally crossing the chasm. So if you actually go on Google Trends and you, com uh, you compare Hadoop, what I would argue is a technical term versus big data, what's kind of the CIO term, mm. you actually will see that uh, the big data is having a, growing like a hockey stick, where Hadoop is actually flooding out. CIOs are winning. <laughs> <laughs> they, all, they have the checkbook, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they always win. <laughs> so, the, so what's very interesting really is that the conversation that we're having with a lot of customers is really changing to use cases, right? So right, for, for, a while, for a while it was um, more kind of the technology looking for what can it solve, and you had some early adopters, right, the techies, but now it's really, you know, the classical business problems. Funnel optimization, fraud identification, marketing segmentation, and there's huge value there, right? But it doesn't matter if it's you know this version, that version, in memory, compressed, over optimized. It's a question: What is that technology really bringing to my business? Is the big question now. Yeah, or other use cases like we had Sky Christofferson on, one of your you know, customers, partners, collaborators, which is amazing what they were doing. I guess like you're using your technology to yeah. help athletes squeeze a little more juice out of their, you know, bodies. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, uh, it's super interesting. I mean, I, I love the story, right? It um, made, um, all in data me had goosebumps. Um, and we was like sitting in front of the screens at the Lon London Olympics. We couldn't talk about it, right? But um, it's just such a great story that there's such a cultural shift in sports. We used to have doping as kind of the standard, right? And now it all came up. You know, here's Sky and, and, the, and the woman bicycling team, and they have an innovative way, you know, and it's focused on data. It's focused on quantified self data, and they use data mirror to really look at the patterns, and mm -hmm. they found amazing insights. And boy, they shaved off five seconds, you know, came in as like, no way they will get anywhere close to the medals, and won a silver medal, and it's just, that's, again, that makes goosebumps, and this is so great, because Hadoop is not just able to sell more advertisement, Right, but it also really can change lives, and that's just a great. Well, and story. we we met at the uh, the uh, the IBM meeting, the Athens uh, out in uh, Almaden, which yeah. is kind of a cool thing. And we were having lunch together. And we were you were we were talking about the business users, and you were showing me the little demo, and it's just amazing what you could do with visualization these days. And, and John, I think that uh, you know, yeah. Stefan's saying we're crossing the chasm. It feels that way, doesn't it? Well, I mean, look at Dave. This, let's just be. Let's just go right into the into the uh, heart of the conversation. The, it's all about enterprise grade and business value. And I think, Stefan, some of the things you brought up and I saw on Twitter that I'd like to talk to you about is that business value. Mm -hmm. Because we are now at that, the rising tide, it's floating the boats, but the harbor yet is dead to be filled up, or the lake or the ocean, whatever data lake or analogy people want to use. But to go public, to get bought, or to make money, startups or growing companies need to have metrics. So I want to get your perspective on this, because you're out there, you're, you're talking to a lot of the vendors, you're in the middle, you like Switzerland. What is the metrics? What are the metrics that, that need to be in place to have a sustainable business model in this market? You know, assuming obviously it's a little frothy right now, but I want to yeah. get your perspective on that. <laughs> okay, great question. Well, so first of all, you have to provide ROI to your customers, right? So let, let's really start at the basics. And, and, a, and a lot of folks, uh, they sell you a tool set. Right, and there, there's really a challenge around that 
because if you actually do the math behind that, and we do this with our customers on a daily basis, we have a nice, nice ROI tool where you calculate the total cost of ownership. Well, it turns out Hadoop um, and the hardware and all that good stuff is really cost efficient, no question. But boy, if you have a tool set, you have to duct tape it together. And if you duct tape it together, you need people that are you know, knowledgeable about that. That's actually not cost efficient anymore. If you have five developers that, by the way, go for 200K in Silicon Valley that now are duped, duct taping something together out of all those different pieces um, for a year, you could just spend a million dollars. So we really have, a on, have to have an honest conversation about this. We always say, oh, you know, you can save IT costs with a dupe, but actually if you do the math, that's not the case if you duct tape and build from ground something. It's actually sometimes cheaper using an MPP database, right? So, so th there's important conversations. I do bring something really important to the table, but it's not SQL on, on top of a dupe or lowering your IT costs. It's, it's about flexibility, no schema, those kind of things. Well, so it's er it's early there. though, it's early though. I mean, it's not like it's not, it's going to add value. What you're saying is it might not be that shiny brass ring that you're going to have right out of the gate. Well, you know, Hadoop is another tool in the toolbox, right? And that's very important. So you have to know, um, do you need a screwdriver or do I need a hammer, right? And Hadoop is a freight train, basically. If you need a Ferrari, you need an MPP database. Anyhow, so to, to answer- and gentlemen, the To answer your question- is now closed. To answer a question here really is, um, you know, what, what is important really if you want to be successful as a company is to build your customer base, provide them value, you know, obviously make more money than you spend acquiring them, right? Uh, Guy Kawasaki, uh, famous words are death by customer acquisition cost. A lot of <laughs> startups actually fail. They raise a lot of money, what's well, usually a bad sign because that means they bleed money um, to get customers. And you know, if you, if you get that right, if you get more, you know, if you make more dollars than you spend on getting the customer, then you're moving the right direction, right? And if you get to a certain stage, then um, it might be interesting to uh, get acquired by one of the big guys if the technology works. Or if you get it really good and get really big, then you know, you maybe might do an IPO. But as always in Silicon Valley, you have a lot of companies that raise a lot of money because they have a product that they need to spend $100,000 to sell. Right, very, very classical enterprise software problem. So can we go back to the comments that you were making? Mm -hmm. um, let's just go directly to it, because you, you're well known for your, your position on SQL coming to Hadoop. Can, yeah. can, you, can you restate that position and we can try to help us understand technically why you feel that way or, or from a business standpoint? Yeah, so if you think about the Hadoop file system, it actually works like a tape drive. Right, we, we, all, we all remember Hadoop what tape drives is. New, Hadoop <laughs> is the new tape, they say. It's not the new oil, it's the new tape. Yeah. <laughs> but you, you know, if you, if you try to find that one song on your tape, right, um, all the way on the back, what you had to do is go all the way to the tape. And technically, Hadoop is a sequential uh, optimized file system, and you know, to find an individual record, you have to s basically stream to all of the data. Yeah. Um, that gives Hadoop the performance for analytical workloads, like full tables, scans, joins, all those kind of good stuff. Fantastic, but, right. But <laughs> for a very language, right, it's just miserable. That's why we invented CDs that actually have more B3 kind of data structure, where you actually have an index and then you know where to jump to, what you can do with a CD but not with a tape. Now, you know, putting a query language on top of a sequential optimized file system is just not making sense. It doesn't make sense even more if we already have very great Majora technology. I'm not against SQL, you know, it's a very good tool, but you have Oracle, you have DB2, you have MS SQL, you have Greenplum, Vertica, uh, Natiza, you it's there since 20 years. And the performance those tools bring, those technologies are somewhere else, it's a different university than, um, um, universe than we will ever get with Hadoop because it's a sequential file system. Now the only reason some of those vendors I think do this, right, is because they need more adoption in their customer base. And hey, those guys all know chocolate, let's put some chocolate crusting on top of that, but then the customer's biting into the cake and realizing, well it's actually sausage and not a cake, 
Right, so, and there's a big problem. So, so they have expectation around, excuse my German I metaphors. Love, I love yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> Chocolate covered sausage, dude. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, right, so they have expectation around SQL, and Hadoop will never fill them because the underlying architecture was never done for that. Now, the big question is, what is Hadoop then bringing to the table? I would argue that the new currency in organization is time. Right? If you push a new smartphone to the market, you have maybe only eight weeks to make it successful in, during the market entry. Now, a traditional three-tier data analytics architecture where you have ETL, where if data is the new oil, where you break up the data and make plastic out of it, and you melt it into that schema, into that form of your data warehouse, and then you put BI on top of that. It's really a 19th century production environment, right? Where, yeah, that's how we used to do that. The reason we used to do that is because the man hours we invested in pre-optimizing the data was much cheaper than the really, really expensive data warehouse. Well, guess what? The whole thing turned around with Hadoop. Now we have more slaw, right? Every 18 months, hardware capacity doubles multiplied by the number of machines in your Hadoop cluster. So you basically have unlimited storage and compute. We do not need to pre-optimize anymore. So what we now can do is almost kind of data 3D printing. We take the raw material, we put it in Hadoop, and now we can create views on the data. We create a marketing view, a sales view, you know, an IT view on the same raw data. And what that brings us is agility. So instead of spending 18 months, and that's a number from TDWI, on implementing the ETL Data Warehouse BI infrastructure, and it takes you 18 months to change, by the way, as well. We now we have customers that within three days integrate data, create their views on the raw data, and get their insights. And if you're able to move in the market faster, then you can win against your competition. It's the only competitive advantage today is agility and flexibility. Okay, so you're prescribing Use Hadoop as it was intended to be used, yeah. um, as this flexible, you know, the John calls it data ocean. He doesn't like the term data lake. Right? Don't yeah, like it. Don't it's like too so small. And then yeah. it's too calm. Data universe. And then use. Well, we want to boil the ocean. That's the. That's, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> rip tides and rip currents and all that stuff. And every you entrepreneur. Use SQL where it belongs. Yeah. So move the data out of Hadoop right. when you need to do that. Yeah, or in, if you have structured data from the start with, just leave it in your MPP database. I mean, organizations have MPP databases, and they're great, great performance, great ETL tools, great BI tools, great security, it works, right? So for me, again, I do this since 10 years, and I spend a lot of time really trying to innovate here. For me, it feels like we backporting a NoSQL platform that has no schema back to something now that requires schema, just to put the chocolate on top of that. Come on, let's call it sausage, and it's okay. If we're hungry for that, we can have that. <laughs> Great. Okay, so uh, give us the update on, on Datamere. You guys made some you know, new announcements recently. Uh, talk, talk about where you're at as, as, as a company. Yeah, um, so we just announced Datamere through zero, and we're super excited about this. It took us uh, two years to really get this functionality in the product. We, we, we started hiring two years ago, and we're really passionate. I mean, the whole, uh, Olympic team story tell, uh, shows um, what Datamere is about. We believe data and data analytics should um, belong to subject matter experts. Data, if technology is as difficult that you need a scientist to work with it, we as you know, vendors did something wrong. We really believe the doctor or the medical folks need to look at the data, not the data scientist. Data scientists know about algorithms and I'm an IT, I'm an engineer as well. I've worked a lot in data mining in all my career, so you know, you, maybe I could classify myself even there, but what I really saw is when people like Sky Christofferson, you know, get access to the data and they see things that data scientists, engineers, IT will not see. So what we did in 3.0 is we introduced smart analytics. And smart analytics is basically machine learning, data mining, advanced analytics, however you want to call it, but it's so simple that everybody can use it. There's a single click of a button and you can do clustering on your data. So here's all my customer data, just go and find groups yourself. Then we did column dependencies, where you basically say, okay, well here's my you know, lead database, find out if there's um, you know, relationships. And we actually analyzed our Marketo data, where our um, yeah, marketing leads yeah, are in. Yeah. And what we saw is there's a very strong relationship between lead source and job title. 
and we drilled down. It was for we use our own, you know, our own sausage. We eat our own sausage. <laughs> um, and what we saw is like, wow, actually our webinars, um, more VPs and CIOs coming to, where to trade shows, there's more software engineers coming to. So we instantly changed our messaging in our webinars, and we have much more technical stuff in roadshows now. So instant insights with a click of a button where we could see that as well. Then we have um, decision trees. That is, was also fantastic. We optimized our whole sales process based, again, on this um, on, uh, on insights we found with this. There's basic where we basically look into the data as well and you get a beautiful graph, like a, like a tree graph, where you can understand, okay, well I have a lot of leads out of that specific uh, vertical, so it's, let's say healthcare, right? There's a lot of talk about big data on healthcare. But you know what? They're so slow in adapting technology, they don't convert for us very well. So we stopped spending time, for example. But hey, there's a lot of interest in, let's say, financial services. We have four of the five biggest banks as customers, right? Um, but you know what? We don't convert them if we talk to the IT manager. Well, we sell a business analyst tool. Right? So we saw all those things with a single click of a button. We have recommendation engine as well. And again, we're very passionate. We believe that if we, that the biggest pr problems in our society can be solved with insights we can find in data. But we really need to put it in the hand of the people that know those specific problems. Yeah, that's your that's your strategy. Making making heroes, data heroes out of business people. Yeah, and, uh, we're, we're getting we're getting the hook here. But I want to ask you one question because I want to end on this note. Um, uh, first of all, great perspective. We love having you in the cube. One great content, um, great opinion as well, um, which we like. Um, advice to entrepreneurs, because obviously, mm -hmm. you know, it's a confusing marketplace. You using your own technology, eating, making, and eating your own sauces. We kind of have our own tools as well. It's right. very difficult for an entrepreneur to come into these crowded spaces today and right. differentiate themselves right. when what they're building is either a converged and or integrated solution of other metaphors. Right. So, what's your advice to entrepreneurs, especially in the yeah. analytics space? You're talking about smart analytics. Right. How do they talk to, to potential investors or to recruit employees? How do they talk about the vision and or their market opportunity in this new world? It's not siloed, I'm not just this, that, or the other thing. It's complicated, so what's yeah. your advice? Yeah, so um, it's, a, it's a very important question. In, so Datum is my sixth company, and I crashed and burned a few in between, <laughs> and I had to learn, the, learn this really the hard way. Um, and I have, I'm an engineer, right? I always try to solve technical problems. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. What you need to solve are business problems. And the technology needs to have an edge to it so you can solve the business problem that nobody could solve before. So if you have a faster version of a file system or if you can stream something in memory or if your thing is a thousand times faster and scales a million times, it doesn't matter, <laughs> right? <laughs> what you need to find is this one specific area where someone has a problem and go and solve that problem. And you know, if it's PHP or shell script you use to solve the problem, it doesn't matter. But there's huge opportunity in data, right? So think about, you know, my favorite example is um, airlines. There's a huge big data problem there. They have to optimize their flight plans, right? There's a lot of regulation. Crews can only be dead long in the air. If there's a delay, they have to have a crew on standby. This is really expensive. If they need to reroute um, airplanes, it's, uh, they have to get more gas up front, but it's even more expensive. You have to buy it a certain time. There's a perfect environment here with a lot of competitive pressure that you could solve with big data. And there's um, everywhere else, supply chain, you know, I saw a really interesting company that used sensor data to optimize um, vegetable delivery to uh, like farmer's market and those kind of things. This is what you need to solve, a real problem. Don't just play with the shiny new toys and build technology. It's great, I love it too. I'm an engineer, every, you know, every new toy I need to have and I need to optimize it and build my own. Nobody unfortunately cares. Solve a real problem and contribute to the society. If you're really passionate about this to improve a real problem in the world and not just do a little bit better technology, I think you will be successful. 
That's great advice from a um, serial entrepreneur who has a very successful business now and has some scar tissue, as he said, he's crashed and burned a few times, as we all have. Dave and I can attest to that. We love having entrepreneurs and successful CEOs on. Stefan, thank you so much for coming thank in you. on theCUBE. I, I really appreciate it. I brought it. you our latest t-shirt, as always. Okay, Datamir oh, always uh, has it's the a, best shirts. It's a data scientist. Now you, can, now you can be a data scientist too. We are data scientists. We are introducing <laughs> software-defined Hadoop into the nomenclature. Uh, wait a minute, software, Hadoop is software. Um, that's our joke for the week, and no, no one's laughing. Okay, we'll be back here at theCUBE right after this short break. This is Silicon Angle and Wikibon's coverage of Hadoop Summit. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. We'll be right back after this short break. Thank you.